Hello, YouTube, and welcome back to another video. Today, we have the pleasure of welcoming Ryan King, who is a Senior Vice President at Calibre Mining Corp. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Excellent, Justin. Um, how are you today? I'm doing really good, thank you. And you got a beautiful background there. So uh, reading your news release today, it looks like you guys had some pretty meaningful news. Would you mind elaborating on exactly what that was? Sure, yeah. So yeah, we came out with, um, with our preliminary production numbers for the second quarter of 2023. Um, I think uh, when we look at these numbers again, it's a record production quarter for us um, and a record year to date for the mm -hmm. company. If you, we look back, uh, Caliber acquired gold production in 2019. We've optimized the assets, we've grown production, and we've grown reserves year over year. So it's really exciting to come out with, uh, with a quarter of over 68,000 ounces of gold produced in Q2. So that puts us in a great position to meet or exceed um, our annual guidance. Those are uh, pretty good numbers. I think all, everyone likes hearing records because uh, it just means that things are going well, the, the machine's well lubricated and things are going well. So how about we take a step back and we just understand maybe who Ryan is and what uh, Caliber Mining Corp does and where you guys sure. are. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's a good place to start, right? <laughs> um, so myself, I've been in the gold business for, uh, for almost 20 years now, putting together, uh, communicating and uh, marketing uh, gold producers, gold developers, mm -hmm. gold explorers for again 20 years. So various different entities. Uh, Caliber is one of those companies, right? We uh, we've been a gold explorer really in Central America since 2010, and mm -hmm. in 2019 we stick with our deals very closely. So I've worked uh, with Doug Forrester, uh, Blaine Johnson. These are some names that gold investors may know but your general audience may not know. And these are guys that have been very successful in the gold business, created over $5 billion of wealth for investors in the space. We're very specific in what we do in terms of, we don't branch off to other sectors when they're hot. We're always doing gold deals. Doug is a master's of science in economic geology and Blaine is a very well-known uh, investment banker and has been an investment banker in his previous career. So now those two came together and started putting deals together and Caliber is one of these deals. And we, we, we basically decided to acquire gold production and then look at ways of optimizing it because our previous deal, which we launched in 2015 called New Market Gold, was incredibly successful. That was a deal yeah. that acquired gold production, optimized it, took cash flow and reinvested it back into the business and we were very successful to find new high-grade gold deposits. And that company went on to merge with Kirkland Light Gold to create a multi-billion dollar company. Mm. And so Caliber is a replication of that. We hope to have the great, same success we did with New Market. And uh, we have year over year, as I've mentioned, uh, since acquiring the gold production in 2019, optimized the assets. So 2020, we had 136,000 ounces of gold production. Last year, we had 222,000 ounces of gold production. And this year, we're guiding 250 to 275,000 ounces of gold production. So it's exciting to be a part of a, you know, a real business that's focused on making the assets better inorganically and organically expanding our asset base, being mm -hmm. very focused and dedicated to what we do. So it sounds like you guys have a very well lubricated machine with people who have decades of experience. You guys are really bringing that to the table. And something I found, which has any, uh, the, the, the recipe of success for any company that I found includes three things, people, process, product. So I heard you talk about the people. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about the process because you guys are not a small, um, small, small ish golder company. Again, not like a micro cap, but like a midsize. Yep. So like, what's the process you guys have to actually hit those record numbers? Is it just uh, like, I'm just curious from your point of view, like what actually got you guys to that record production? Yeah, so that's a great question because when we look back at the assets that we acquired in 2019, we paid $100 million for uh, a suite of assets in Central America, in Nicaragua. Mm. We acquired a, one producing, well, two producing assets, one that was actually getting ready to close because it was right. running out of resources and reserves on the property. So we bought these two mills and the surrounding properties. And so we anticipated producing 50 to 70,000 ounces a year using that cash flow and then looking for or exploring in a broader land package for new deposits, new resources. Mm. When in fact, what we did was we looked at our portfolio that we acquired. We acquired this and partnered with B2 Gold. They became one of our largest shareholders. They still are today at 25% of the company. <laughs> so we paid cash and shares and worked so that it was a win-win for both parties. <clears throat> so fortunately, what we were able to do is because one of the assets was heading towards closure, there was still state-of-the-art 
uh, large unused uh, processing capacity at this mill. We sort of, we then looked at opportunities to haul material to that facility rather than just mining and processing from the actual site. So our chief executive officer, Darren Hall, was 30 years at New York. So he brings a level of operational expertise and experience that has helped us unlock a lot of value here. So year over year, we've brought on new satellite deposits within the portfolio. We've de-bottlenecked or, or de-orphaned these satellites, and then we haul the material to one or two of these facilities. So we still have over a million tons of surplus capacity, so uh, opportunity for growth. But mm -hmm. that's what allowed us to steadily increase gold production year over year is almost every year since owning these assets, we've permitted and then brought on a new satellite to feed mm -hmm. into these uh, either one of these infrastructures. And as I say, we still have upside potential to generate uh, more cash flow and generate uh, additional production. That's pretty impressive because uh, when I look at your chart, like it's been a pretty meteoric rise in the last uh, like roughly year to date. And um, I can understand the reason why. So um, is there anything else you can touch on in terms of the process, in terms of what the future might look like? Uh, again, if, if you're able to, I know you have these numbers out, your financial reports will come out soon with more detail. Um, but what, I, what, I'm, what I'm hearing personally is that you guys were able to take um, a few other mixed assets, make them more productive or get a better return on the investment. So what are those future investments you guys are making today that you can harvest tomorrow? Well, this is the thing about the gold business, right, is that every year that we process and mine our material, we're running out of future production or revenues, right? So we take a lot of our, our, our operating cash flow and reinvest it back into the business, whether that be through mine development or whether that be through exploration. So year over year, again, since acquiring, not only have we grown production, but we've actually replaced and added to our reserve base. Mm. So uh, at the end of 2022, we had the largest reserve base these assets have ever seen and at the highest grade. So what's exciting about that is that uh, when we look at the grade component, that's really a proxy for margin. Mm -hmm. So our company is not only a growing production, but we're getting more financially uh, favorable for all of the production that we are producing. So we're, we we're self-funding all of that mine development. We're self-funding all of the operating costs and we're self-funding all of the exploration. And we're adding cash, as you saw by today's mm -hmm. news release. We increased our cash position over 30% versus Q1. So a great place for us to be uh, going forward to be able to take advantage of the opportunity that we see in the gold market today in terms of potential future inorganic opportunities and not just looking at the organic opportunities in front of us today. That's pretty exciting because uh, oftentimes uh, companies are, if, if they're uh, like smaller ones, like uh, I would say like you're more like a medium sized company, but what they're often doing is they're exploring, which means they don't actually have that production where they can take the, take the, take the, um, take the return and then reinvest it. So because you guys are a later stage, that's pretty exciting because uh, it means that you can actually pull levers and decide how fast you want to grow, where you want to invest and how profitable you want to be. That, that sounds pretty good. So the last part I touched on is the people process product. So I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, you're bullish on gold. Um, your gold is going to be equal to everyone else's. But what I'd be curious on is when you look at gold, um, I know you guys probably have like a break even price, but what's your broader view on gold? Because oftentimes these things are called super cycles, which means sometimes they take a super long time to happen. But when <laughs> they do, they give you super returns. So making those investments today, like you just talked about, when you want to go harvest them tomorrow, um, what, what, what's your outlook on gold? Um, if you want to give it a price, great. If not, sure. I'd be curious on your take, uh, take on that because you've already uh, a gold executive. Yeah, I mean, you know, as, as I mentioned before, I've been around the gold business for many years. Um, and, and it is, it is uh, uh, like any uh, market product. We have ups and we have downs. And timing mm -hmm. is, is pretty critical. And I think we're at a place in time in the gold cycle or the overall gold sector where um, we do have a lot of competing products. You know, there's a lot of passive products out there in terms of ETFs, but there's also a lot of uh, new products in terms of the cryptos or the Bitcoins that are eating into, you know, kind of that safe haven investment product. Mm -hmm. But gold has been around for centuries and uh, it has, has been one of the longest standing, if not the longest standing safe haven asset out there. And when, um, when I look at the trillions of dollars of fiat currencies that have been used as uh, quantitative easing to help uh, you know, steady uh, different countries, currencies, et cetera, uh, I, I'm in disbelief about the, the size of debt and 
we're at today in this environment. And then, you know, even recently we see uh, where we're some of the BRICS countries, you know, China, Russia, India, um, Brazil, and many others I've heard that have wanted to join this. And they're talking now about a gold-backed currency, which could very significantly rival the U.S. dollar and potentially dethrone over time uh, that that uh, that fiat currency. So very interesting time. So for now, I'm cautiously optimistic about gold. You know, we've been holding this $1,900 range for quite a while in terms of, you know, uh, interest rates going up and interest rates holding and what is going to happen. I don't think there's a real cre clear direction in the near term. But clearly, when you take a step back, you just look at the debt, you look at uh, the serviceability of that debt, the, uh, yet as we've recently gone through the, the debt ceiling, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're in a very interesting time for gold and all commodities for that matter. And I, I do believe over time, we're going to see much higher gold prices. Yeah, I would echo that too, because uh, we, we talked briefly before we hit record too, and I mentioned that uh, gold has hit a new high in almost every major currency except for the US dollar. So it's just a matter of time. The US dollar is starting to finally weaken a bit. And I think when that one finally gets over that 2000 roughly barrier, that'll be the uh, be the part where we're going to have a big aha moment. And um, the last thing I just want to mention is uh, like, I have a final question that I just want to creep in here because last year gold was really boring. Um, and I think it closed to the year out like roughly flat, uh, but equity, equities did not. So people uh, hate something boring when the market's going up, but they love it when things are not going up. So I know that we're, we're not advocating for people to go like all into gold or go, uh, go, go buy all of it. It's just to be properly diversified so that you have mm -hmm. more than one thing. You have a fail safe or a backup plan. And um, I really like the answer you mentioned regarding uh, gold because you don't want to have your business based on the expectation of future prices being higher. You want to be right. profitable today with the upshot that if or when this does happen, you guys are able to profit from that. Um, so with that said, do you have any final comments you would like to leave the audience with? Well, I think to your point you just made, you want to be looking at businesses or businesses in, you know, <clears throat> unfortunately a bit of volatile times. Um, we've seen the Dow stocks continuously go up and they've had hiccups along the way. But I think you mentioned earlier that, you know, we're still again back, back to almost all time highs again. Mm -hmm. And yet this cannot sustain itself. And everyone uh, that I know of has discredited or um, been not interested in the gold sector. And mm -hmm. I think this is a sector where people are going to start noticing that it is a safe haven and equities are going to continue to are going to hold up better than they have in the past. And as gold prices stay where they are, more and more investors are starting to believe that this is a sector they have to own, or at least a portion, as you said, of an overall balanced portfolio. And I believe it's not just going to be gold physical but it will also be different products around gold, like an ETF or, and then looking at individual stocks that can provide additional beta. So it's a very interesting time for us. Uh, our business is hitting great strides. I think it's got a great future in front of us. We're self-funding all of our developments and exploration. And as I say, I don't even think we've hit a gold cycle yet. So uh, I'm very um, optimistic about the future, not only from our product, but the overall macro environment for our commodity that we operate in. And from my perspective, if uh, we're bullish on gold, things usually work in beta, which means if gold is moving, miners move more, juniors move the most after that. And that's what I was that's what I was trying to kind of that's what I was trying to get at by noticing your chart year to date performance because gold's it's it's done okay, but it's not been like a, like a big wow. Um, but your charts perform really well, which means that the market is rewarding your uh, your past performance and it thinks the future is going to look bright. So if you guys want to learn more about Caliber Mining Corp, you can find them under the ticker symbol CXB on the TSX or CXBMF over the counter. Thank you so much, Ryan, for, uh, for being here and I uh, wish you all the best of luck. Thanks, Justin. Look forward to talking to you again. Thank you.